proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another broadcast of your War Department program, Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present the distinguished actor, Mr. Pat O'Brien, as the star of our play, The Biggest Man in Town, written by Tom Petty with music by Eddie Skrivanek. <laughs> Here's Terry Cassidy, tough, hard-hitting managing editor of the Rivertown News. And the young lady coming into his office is Joyce Tyler, reporter just back from an assignment. Hi, Terry. Hi. What kind of a police force have we got in this town? An escaped convict runs loose for 12 hours and they can't lay a finger on him. You've been out with him all day. What'd you find out? Mm, not very much, Terry. Except that Leg Smith, the killer, is still around and still wearing his striped suit. <laughs> but we picked up something pretty hot on the way home. Yeah, what? Well, just a little story that will give River City the biggest laugh it's had this summer. All right, I'm listening. <laughs> well, Joe and I were driving through Fairview Park on our way back to the office, and... What are you what? doing over there? I sent you to police headquarters. <laughs> oh, we've been on a wild goose chase in the country looking for the escaped prisoner. And burning gasoline to run up an expensive car. Oh, curve. wait till you hear the story. You know that hill in the park over by the river? Well, there was a man running down the hill, and he didn't have any clothes on. That's a good start, a man running, no clothes. Ah, not a stitch. He was draped in vine leaves. We caught up with him just as he reached his car at the foot of the hill. Joe had his camera out, and we got a close-up of him crossing the road. Who was he, the escaped convict or Tarzan? Mm, nobody as commonplace as that. Our nudist friend was none other than J.B. Fillmore. The banker and candidate for mayor. Mm-hmm. Well, that guy sleeps in a cutaway coat. What was he doing running around without his clothes? Well, that's what I tried to find out. But when I mentioned the news, he drove off in a huff, still wearing his vine leaves. You better get out of the Fillmore's house. Maybe he'll talk when he gets back into his cutaway. I don't think I'll have to. He'll be here any minute to try to get the picture killed. What makes you think so? Well, he mentioned having some such idea in mind. Where's the managing editor? Uh, 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 uh. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's me. Bring him back alive, Tyler. Looks now. like you're right as usual, Joyce. Oh. Yeah. This is an outrage, sir. Definitely an outrage. That it is. It's an outrage, all right. Well, I'm pleased to know that you agree with me. Who said anything about agreeing with you, Mr. Fillmore? You committed the only outrage around here, breaking into my office, yelling at me. What do you want? I want that story stopped. Then you'd better stop running around the park in your birthday suit. I want that picture destroyed. I'll sue you. I'll, I'll bankrupt your paper. No, 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 no. You're losing your temper, Mr. Fillmore. <laughs> I want that girl fired, and the photographer, too. Yeah, anything else you'd like? Yes, I'd like you to stop meddling in my affairs, trying to ruin me politically because of an unfortunate accident. He wants me to fire you, Joyce. Well, why don't you fire me, Terry? Maybe I will, but not tonight. You got a story to write first. Well, I've got the first page with me. Want to look it over? Yeah, I'll read it to Fillmore. Okay. He might want to make some corrections. You can't do this to me, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, Cassidy's the name, uh, Terry Cassidy. Yeah, well, I'm a big man in this town, Mr. Cassidy. Sure, sure, that's what makes this a story. Ah, this is a good lead, Joyce. Thanks. Listen to this, Fillmore. The weather has been hot around Rivertown recently, but nobody did anything about it until yesterday afternoon when J.B. Fillmore, leading banker and candidate for mayor, stepped in and foreclosed on the heat wave. <laughs> He shed his cutaway coat and pearl grade trousers for a sarong of vine leaves. Yep, that's right. He stripped off his clothes right in the middle of Fairview Park. Now, <laughs> Mr. Cassidy, it didn't happen like that. You're just trying to make me look ridiculous. Well, what did happen? What did happen, Fillmore? Well, I can hardly understand it myself. You see, I, uh, well, I used to go swimming there in the park when I was a kid. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. You were passing the old swimming hole and... All of a sudden, you decided you'd go swimming. Well, it was a foolish, undignified thing to do, but I <clears throat> did it, Mr. Cassidy. There was no one around, and when I got out of the water, my car was gone. You forgot to set the brakes. The car rolled down the hill. Yes, that's it. Right out in plain sight of everyone, and my clothes were in the car. I found some leaves, and, uh... <clears throat> oh, this is most embarrassing. You've got to stop that girl's story. Tear up the picture. Well, how about it, Terry? We've got the true facts now. Do you want me to kill it or finish it? Finish it. Make the rest of it as good as the lead. Now, look here. Fillmore, what this town needs is a good laugh and is going to get it at your expense. Well, this will ruin me. I'll never live it down. Liable to make it. 
You've been a stuffed shirt all your life. You've been so busy trying to be the biggest man in town, you've almost forgotten how to be human. We need a mayor with a sense of humor, and here's your chance to prove you've got one. But, but in the picture, you've got to tear it up. I've got the caption for Mr. Fillmore's vine-clad photo, Terry. Candidate for mayor cools off. Have it set up. Tell Jerry to put it on page one. This is the end. I'll have to leave town. Fillmore, you'll be famous tomorrow morning. <laughs> Our story starring Pat O'Brien will continue in just a moment. But first, hear our enlightening messages from two of America's eminent educators, John S. Dickey, President Dartmouth College, and Theophilus S. Painter, acting president of the University of Texas. Mr. Dickey voiced his opinion that... Although each person must decide such matters for himself in the light of all the individual circumstances, I have no hesitation in saying that the educational benefits now offered those who enlist in the armed services seem to me to go a long way toward making the opportunities of higher education possible for many qualified boys who otherwise might feel they just could not afford the cost of further schooling. And Mr. Pater said, I note with pleasure that the Army is making provisions for the education of young men who first serve a term of enlistment, and I can see definite advantages accruing to such young men. In the first place, it has been clear to many of us who have been teaching a long time that many men would benefit more from a college education if they came to us somewhat more mature and with definite ideas of what they wanted to prepare themselves for. In the second place, this army plan will make it possible for many young men to get college training who otherwise would not feel able to do so because of lack of finances or of family responsibilities. <laughs> Over on the rival newspaper, they say that Terry Cassidy is the sort of an editor who would print a scandalous story about his grandmother. And maybe the boys are right. But let's get back to the news. How about it, Joyce? All clear? Mm, just finishing the last page. There. Oh, you know something, Terry? Maybe we're too tough in this business. I can't help but feel sorry for Mr. Fillmore now. Hey! Don't you go soft on me after I've spent three years training you to be a newspaper reporter. Oh, aren't you interested in anything but well reporters? Sure I am. And I'm interested in all sorts of things. But not until I get my paper put to bed. Oh, look, Terry. Oh, Fillmore's got a family. He's the president of a bank. He's a big, powerful man. Ambitious politically and... What of it? That's all the more reason for taking him down a peg. <laughs> oh, this is going to make him look silly. I hope it does. He's been pushing people around too long. Uh, You've pushed quite a few people around yourself, my fine feathered friend. What's that got to do with Fillmore? Well, I... Oh, I was just wondering what would happen if... Well, if If you... I what? Mm, nothing. Come on, Terry, I'm famished. How about buying me a dinner? Hmm. That's an idea. It makes sense. Come on. <laughs> and you aren't going to get me into Billy's lunch wagon, either. We're eating at the Savoy tonight, baby. Ah, that's more like it. <laughs> I believe Mr. Fillmore really broke the heat wave. Look at it rain. Yeah, it's coming down pretty hard. Here we are at the Savoy. Let you out here at the entrance. Join you as soon as I park the car. Only take a minute. All right. <laughs> it's my lucky night. There's a parking space. All right, get him up. Reach. Where'd you come from? Where do you think? Hand me your keys and get over behind that car. You're Leg Smith, the escaped convict. I ain't Santa Claus. How'd you get here in the middle of town in that striped convict suit? I didn't fly. I've been hiding out in that house behind you till six cops flushed me out. All right, start stripping. I need a car and I need a new suit. I won't do it. You can't get away with All right, drugs. shut up or I'll let you have it. Come on. I believe you would. Yeah, that's better, pal. And yeah, now hand me those clothes of yours. That's right, and get into this monkey suit that I've been wearing. But I... All I'm... right, I'll slug you and dress you myself. Um, uh, okay. I'll put the stripes on. Man can't run down Main Street in his shorts. Not in the rain, pal. Well, so long, sucker. 
Well, I'll be... All right, Legs. Put your hands up and stand still. But the convict's getting away in my car. Don't have any funny business. Guess I'm a patsy, all right. Even the cops stick me up. So you're Leg Smith. Tough guy. Well, we'll soften you up on the way to the station. Come on. Well, well, well. Hello, Terry. Oh, Joyce. <laughs> when did you join the force? I borrowed this uniform at the police station. Oh, so that's where you've been. Hmm. Looks neat on you. I like it better than the one I was wearing. Oh, let's get this straight. You stood me up at the Savoy. I waited 20 minutes and took a taxi back to the office. And you turn up in a cop's uniform. Come on, what happened? Plenty. I went to park the car and it's Leg Smith. The cops couldn't find, found me. While half the police force in Rivertown were looking under beds in a rooming house, he sticks me up and steals my car after making me change clothes with him. Wow, sounds like you've been having a big night. It's just starting. Top everything, they took me down to headquarters before I could convince anybody I was Terry Cassidy. There was a photographer from the Globe there, and, and only snapped me. Holy smoke. What are you going to do? Do? Joyce, get Walker at the Globe on the phone for me. Oh, Terry. You're not going to ask favors. You're not going to... Honey, I've got to. I'll make a deal with him. Uh... The Globe prints that picture of me in a convict suit, I'll, I'll never be able to face this town. It'll ruin me. And I thought you were a newspaper man. Terry Cassidy, the hard-boiled editor, trying to get a story killed. You're beginning to sound and act like J.B. Fillmore. I asked you to get Walker at oh, the globe right, on the telephone. I'll right. get him. I'll get him. It's going to be a pleasure listening to the great Mr. Cassidy beg. When you get Walker, you'll do the talking. Ask him if we can borrow a print of that picture of me. We'll slap it on page one alongside the one of Fillmore. I'll give Rivertown two good laughs instead of one. Oh, Terry, darling, I always knew you were the biggest man in town. And now we are pleased to present Major General Harold N. Gilbert, Assistant, the Adjutant General for Military Personnel Procurement for the War Department. General Gilbert. I have with me today a young high school graduate who is going to ask me some questions about the possibilities of furthering his education. All right, Jim, fire away. General Gilbert, I've heard that I can get a free college education by enlisting in the regular army. Is that possible, sir? Yes, Jim, that's entirely possible. Congress has extended the educational privileges of the GI Bill of Rights to those men who volunteer for service in our new regular army before October 6th, of this year. Well, just what does that mean, sir? Well, Jim, it means that by serving an interesting three-year enlistment in the regular army, you will become eligible for 48 months of education and training at a college, trade, or business school. The government will pay your tuition and fees up to $500 per normal school year, and you will receive a monthly allowance for living expenses of $65 or $90 if you have dependents. How does that sound to you? It sounds great to me, sir. Now I really can go to college. Yes, Jim. This is an outstanding opportunity to further your education. And your Army enlistment will give you a background of useful information and experience which will help you get the most out of those college years. But remember, you must volunteer before October 6th. That's one date I will remember. And thanks very much, sir. And not at all, Jim. The opportunity of going to college is a very important matter to you young, ambitious men. And I am anxious to let all eligible young men know that a college education is available to them by enlisting before October 6th in the new regular army. Thank you, General Gilbert. And our thanks also to Mr. Pat O'Brien, Mr. Dickey, and Mr. Painter for appearing on this program. Proudly we hail will come again to you over this station next week. Listen in.